Traffic congestion is a growing problem in many metropolitan areas. Congestion occurs when a road is used by more vehicles than it allows. Thus, vehicles cannot exit quickly enough to make way for others. This results in increased travel time, CO2 emissions, and fuel usage as cars cannot run efficiently. The traditional way of dealing with traffic involves building new highway lanes and charging dynamic tolls during peak periods. However, as full electric vehicles are slowly becoming mainstream, there seems to be a more elegant solution. Underground tunnels are widely used for subways, railways, and major highways. However, very few of them are built within cities to alleviate everyday traffic. At first, the reason to this might seem obvious. It could be both noisy and dangerous to have a large number of tunnels underneath a densely populated area. However, this is in fact not true. First, underground construction is nearly impossible to detect from the surface. Seismic waves are the waves of energy caused by the sudden breaking of rock within the Earth. The variation within these waves is the main criterion to detect earthquakes and similarly underground tunneling operations. The diameter of a typical tunnel is around 8 meters. Conveniently, if we were to place the tunnel at 4 times the diameter deep, the surrounding layer of earth is mostly porous and permeable for water and air. These soft materials absorb sound and vibration very well, and the increase in depth exponentially decreases the distinguishable seismic waves at the surface. Much like most of the unfelt earthquakes, you would not be aware of the new road construction under your house. According to Elon Musk, if you are able to detect the tunnel being dug, whatever device you're using, you can get a lot of money for that device from the Israeli military who is trying to detect tunnels from Hamas. Secondly, underground tunnels will not collapse from heavy loads on the surface. Take the series of tunnels underneath the Empire State Building in Manhattan, New York. The Empire State Building has a footprint of 7,340 square meters, or about 2 acres, and weighs about 370,000 tons as it is mostly air. Now granite has a density of 2.6 tons per cubic meter. Doing the math, if the Empire State Building is replaced by a granite block, it will only be about 15 meters tall. Relatively, this is not a large rock, as the deepest subway station in New York reaches 55 meters underground. So, if a tunnel is able to support the bedrock above, it is more than capable of holding its own under man-made buildings. Moreover, tunnels are usually situated directly under roads, thus the practical surface load is much smaller. Then, what is stopping us from building underground roads? In short, the two drawbacks of tunnel boring are high costs and complex designs. Elon Musk and his new business, aptly named The Boring Company, plan to tackle these problems by enhancing the construction productivity and reinventing the tunnel design. We will now explore both of these goals. So, how much does it cost to build a kilometer of subway? This is highly dependent on where our subway is. Internationally, subway construction costs are relatively low. Sao Paulo's 11-kilometer yellow line completed in 2010 cost $1.6 billion. Singapore's Circle Line runs 35 kilometers and costs $4.8 billion. London is also adding a new Elizabeth Line to its underground. When fully open in 2019, it will stretch more than 96 kilometers. Although the total cost of this project will break 20 billion, it is still relatively cheap compared to subways in the US. Look at New York, for example, where the 13.7 km 2nd Avenue subway costs more than $17 billion. In another city suffering from busy traffic, Los Angeles' seemingly endless project to build a 4 km subway also costs $2.5 billion. When normalized to dollars per kilometer, America's tunneling projects clearly have an expensive problem. Elon Musk and his boring company aims to improve the cost to tunneling by 10 folds, and this is done through a series of steps. First, the tunnel diameter can be shrinked by a factor of 2, and consequently, the cross-sectional area of the tunnel is shrinked by a factor of 4. Since the cost of tunneling is proportional to the cross-sectional area, this leads to a cost improvement by a factor of 4. Now, to achieve this design, we notice that the typical tunnel allows for emergency access and ventilation for combustion engine cars. However, in a full electric design, cars are parked stationary in what Elon Musk calls electric skates, with all the traffic automatically managed. Essentially, your car becomes a train car on a single lane rail, and as a result, much less ventilation is necessary, and without human errors, the probability of accidents is reduced. Also, tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, 
can only operate half the time, since temporary support of the tunnel need to be installed as the machine excavates. After the initial drilling, TBMs make their second rounds to raise permanent support linings into place. This suggests that designing a machine that is able to drill and reinforce the tunnel simultaneously can provide a cost improvement by roughly a factor of two. Lastly, Elon Musk also claims that TBMs are often operating suboptimally. Thus, simply overclocking their operating times and speeds can provide the last edge needed to have a tenfold cost improvement. So now that we're within budget, how do we design an underground motorway and why is it so difficult? Continuing from the single lane car skates design, conventional entrances and exits do not work well as the same level of congestion will occur at these bottlenecks. The Boring Company proposes to incorporate elevator-like mechanisms into the city's parking spaces. Although this is an innovative approach, the practicality of having car sides openings on the roadside is yet to be proved. More importantly, we can also build a 3D network with an arbitrary number of such tunnels. This is because the Earth's condition allows tunnels to be much deeper than buildings to be tall. Consequently, if entry and exit bottlenecks are eliminated, this network can alleviate traffic congestions of any sides. Last but not least, Hyperloop can also be incorporated into the network. Hyperloop proposed to propel pod-like vehicles through a reduced pressure tube that would exceed airliner speed and such a tube needs to handle one atmosphere of pressure. As tunnels require a structure capable of handling five or six atmospheres to seal against the water table, it is already able to hold near vacuum. But you might ask, why would we make transportation subterranean instead of aerial, when the flying car has long been a symbol of the future? This calls for another video, so for now, let's summarize the advantages of our boring tunnel. A 3D network of tunnels, as proposed by the Boring Company, can alleviate an arbitrary amount of surface congestion and allow the personal vehicle to reach speeds up to 200 km per hour without stopping in the busiest metropolitan city. It can also integrate reduced pressure tubes for near supersonic trains of the future. The idea is also met with criticism, however, as tunnel projects often cost 32% more money and 22% more time than expected simply due to uncertainties and unforeseen obstructions encountered during drilling. Overall, I am a fan of the idea. However, it is certainly not the only solution, and I will be exploring those other solutions in the series. What do you think about a 3D network of tunnels? Comment below, and I'll be sure to respond. If you like this video, subscribe to see other videos in the future. Thank you for watching.